What's going on YouTube? This is Eric Kelly, aka The Tech Gentleman. And today I'm going to be showing you guys this new app from Samsung called Goodlock. So without further ado, let's talk tech. So guys, this is very straightforward. Um, it's an app from Samsung and it's that simple. But the reason why I felt like I needed to show you guys this app it's because Samsung dropped it. They were real smooth when they dropped it. They didn't make a big deal about it. <clears throat> didn't even really say anything about it. They just, you know, this app just showed up. And originally everybody thought it was just a lock screen replacement app. And for me, I've always had an issue with Samsung's lock screen because it was always kind of sluggish and chunky. So I installed it. And the first thing that let me know this is gonna be more than just a lock screen was the fact that my phone needed to reboot after I installed it. Now, there's no app that you install that needs to reboot your phone to install. And the reason why is because they actually listed here is this is actually the advanced Samsung system UI. So it includes a lock screen, but it also changes your status bar, your notifications, your recent apps, and other things. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of go through all the changes. And I have my S7 with the stock Samsung app. I mean, stock Samsung system UI on it, just to kind of make some comparisons. So the first difference, I'm going to start this with the lock screen. So just going from top to bottom, the first major difference is going to be the fact that you have the ability to add widgets on your lock screen. Now, this is one of those OG um, stock Android features where you can go and you can add pretty much any widget you want from your from your phone to your lock screen. So if I select a couple, like I'll select Android Authority and got an Android Authority widget that shows up and you can add multiple and they don't, on the uh, stock Android UI, they used to rotate, kind of like on like a little rotating box kind of setup. But here they just, they just become lists. So if I grab another app, so I add Google Keep, I'll have me select my Let me select my app for Google Keep and swipe down. And there I have notes and I have my widget. Now, I don't know if they're going to be making updates to this. They should because right now none of the widgets work. So this Android Authority widget is supposed to be one where you can kind of flick away the cards and roll through like a Rolodex. Um, it doesn't do that. It just, it just allows you to select uh, the app and go into it. So basically it's more like a shortcut right now than a widget. Um, you can reorder them so if you want you know a different widget on top you can uh, you know reorder them pretty easily just with the little bar on the side here. I say pretty easily but get two hands in here and grab this guy. Yeah. So you can reorder pretty simply. But um, yeah that's, that's that'll be a cool feature but until they actually get the widgets working um, it's kind of just a, you know, really just a shortcut hider at this point. Um, let's see, in the middle here, you'll notice at the bottom that we have apps going all the way across. But another thing you can do is you can tap this little icon here. It's like a little triangle that, that's hiding there. And you can't really see it, but if you tap it, it'll actually give you the option to add more apps across the bottom. So you get like a little lock screen app tray almost. And so if we go into edit here, we can actually see all the options we have for adding apps. So we can delete these apps here. We can change the grid size. I've got them going five across right now, but you can actually add up to uh, eight, and I'm trying to do this from behind the camera, but yeah, we can actually add up to eight, and you can actually take it down to all the way to three, as far as the organization of them. And once you say done, let us be there, and you can tap your little triangle, hide your apps, have your main three up top, and you can kind of tap right above that uh, center icon and get you know get back to your your full little app drawer. And we also have the option to add, of course, 
But um, as we can see now, they're kind of wiggling iOS style, and we can actually take them and rearrange them. So if you have three that you want quick access to, you know, if I'm, I'm like, I want YouTube in the middle, I can just bring it up to the top, hit done, and drop it down. Now I've got YouTube that's going to sit there at all times. And when I want to access YouTube, I just grab it and swipe up. And I've got a nice little animation there. It's almost like you're stretching the icon out and flicking it up, and it'll pop you into YouTube. So that's a, that's a pretty cool pretty cool feature. Like I say, on the stock, on the current uh, iteration of the lock screen, you can choose from two widgets, one on the left, one on the right. So you got the apps and the hop just into those apps. But like I say, on the new lock screen, on this advanced UI, <clears throat> um, you have significantly more options as far as adding widgets and things like that. Let's see, so another difference, and this one is, Kind of one of my original complaints with the uh, lock screen for Samsung was it was kind of sluggish. The new one is fast. And just to kind of do a comparison, I've got my fingerprint set up on both of these guys. And uh, I'm just going to just gonna do a, a speed comparison. It won't be much difference, but you'll notice that the, uh, the new system UI is going to unlock just a little bit faster than the, uh, than the old one. Notice that I clicked them both at the same time. This guy kind of popped up, you saw the lock screen pop up for a second, then it hopped into the uh, into the actual home screen. We'll do that again. And see, that time it opened up a little bit quicker, but the longer this guy sits, I don't know if it needs to, you know, if the RAM management has something to do with it or what, but uh, this guy pretty much lock, unlocks quickly and consistently every time. So that's one, one thing that I did notice and that I do like about the new advanced system UI and another one it's almost like Samsung kind of said hey what is stock Android doing let's really just add some of those features in so if I go over I got my music play here and I've got some some OG Michael Jackson a little bit of dangerous so if you remember back in the early days of Android when they uh, first introduced this feature I forget what version it was but you had your lock screen music, and it's back. This is one of the features I've really been missing because uh, it just gives your phone a little bit of flair, you know. And it's just a nice, a nice touch to have your uh, your lock screen change along with the music that you're listening to. Because we got these big, beautiful screens, and you know, wallpaper is cool, but you know, you just get to add a little bit more uh, variety to your phone with the uh, lock screen music. So that's another another change. And let's see what else. Uh, oh, yeah, you can also pause this music, swipe it away, you get back your regular lock screen, but also you can change this clock widget. So if I go into my phone and I pull down into this new notification shade that we have here, we got this little button up top. It looks almost like a settings cog rising up out of the ground or something like that. And so if I go into routines, they, I don't know why they call them routines, but they're pretty much just like profiles. So you have a set of settings you can adjust based on your location or certain times of day. So I've got a work routine and a home routine set up. And when you're not in either one of those places or it's not either one of those times, your phone defaults to the, the default routine or profile. So when I go into my default here, you'll see you actually have the option to change the clock widget on the front. So you've got uh, six options you can change to, and they're all kind of drastically different from each other. So you've got like a little minimalist kind of lock there. Uh, you know, there's a couple of styles that you may or may not like. But if we go into my home theme, I mean my home profile or routine, you'll see this is the one that I'm actually currently running now. So. Um, I've got it set up to where it uh, starts at 5 p.m., which is when I get off work, and ends at 7 in the morning. I don't know why it's showing uh, military time or, or whatever at the bottom down here, but, you know, it, it still works. It'll show you the actual, you know, 12-hour time up here, and it'll randomly show a 24-hour time at the bottom. Just another little thing they'll need to uh, fix in the update. 
and as a part of your routine you get to change your clock so this is the current one I have so if I you know change this to you know this minimal theme here go through you can set a couple of quick settings which at home uh, I like to have my Wi-Fi on it's off right now because I'm shooting a video and you can actually change the color of the theme so you choose like a base color and it'll come up with like a palette for the UI and there are a lot of colors I mean ironically the only color I don't remember seeing on this little wheel here is white <laughs> but every other color I mean look at this this is crazy just how many shades of, of colors they have and let's see yeah that's definitely not gonna work go back to something in the blue family here yeah that'll work so I hit next and then once I get here I also get to select some widgets so I can add some widgets that I want uh, to show them my lock screen as well and it'll change based on my location um, that is a is an annoyance if you can see I just hit the back button while I went through all those steps of setting up my profile and it just completely knocked me out of the little profile selection and reset all my settings that's kind of annoying but go through change my lock screen clock set my color hit next so you can change your widget and you can also um, change your app tray apps here so you can move them around you can go to add and actually choose from any of your uh, any of your apps and you can choose up to eight so if we've got some shows on already you can hit OK when I'm just in choosing it to hit cancel and hit save and finish and it says all settings for home routine are completed so I've got my home profile set up so if I lock my screen we'll see that it now has the new little uh, clock widget up top there and also it'll let you know here it's usually it's not in the same place on every clock but there'll always be some sort of little indicator as to what profile or routine you're running see in there it says home in the previous clock I had it actually showed up down here it said home as to the routine that I was running so that's pretty cool being able to set up these profiles like I said I've got a work in the home and set up um, and while we're in here also go to just lock screen and this is another feature if you enable lock screen wallpaper um, and you can actually apply the routine color to your wallpaper so it'll kind of come up with a, a color for your wallpaper based on the color palette you chose for your routine you can actually change your unlock uh, animation so if I choose this uh, Rectangle, rectangle Traveler and I go to lock my phone and so I chose that blue as my profile for home and this kinda came up with the profile it's not just a just a solid blue it's got like a little kinda like a little gradient to it like a little subtle design to it but if you notice now when I touch it and get rid of unlock it I've got these uh, these rectangles that show up for when I unlock it and like if I choose bouncing color hit OK and I go to unlock it and now I've got the little color droplets that pop out from my finger as the animation and like I say the responsiveness and this and the fluidity of this new just the new UI is is great like I say it's faster than the stock one um, especially when it comes to notifications which I'm going to get into here in one second but um, but those are pretty much all the settings you have for your lock screen. So now I want to go into the uh, the notifications right quick. So I've got a couple of notifications here, and I know on Android N they're offering some extra organizational features. I don't know how closely these features kind of ape off of the new N features for your notifications, but um, you um you actually get a couple of options here. So the the biggest one is the option to sort of store away notifications because maybe you see a notification and you're like, well, I want to watch that, I want to read that, I want to interact with that, but not right now. And you actually have two ways you can handle that. Um, if you see here, you have 
an option that says all and you have an option that says keep. So if you swipe to the right, it'll give it'll give you a notification saying move to keep. The notification swipe right is move to keep. So you hit OK. And one cool little UI feature is if you come down and you just want to know if you have any notifications in keep, if you see now how keep the word keep is kind of jiggling, that lets me know I have a notification under there. And if I tap it, it'll show me my notifications that I have under keep. And now I have the option to interact with them as normal. I can expand them. I can delete them, swipe them away, or do whatever I want to do. And when you pull down it, by default, it shows you all of your notifications. And you still get your normal functionality where if you swipe left, the notification goes away. But before I do that, I want to show you guys another option. So if we long press, we get another way to sort of triage our notifications. So I can hit after 10 minutes. I can snooze it. I can hit after 10 minutes. I can hit after 30 minutes or after an hour. So as far as just being able to get back to your notifications, this is a pretty pretty cool and detailed way to be able to handle your notifications. So that way, if you get a bunch of them, um, you can really kind of come up with your own workflow for how you handle these notifications. So something like Slick Deals, it's not, I mean, depending on the deal, it might be time sensitive, but generally, no one is waiting for me to respond to a Slick Deal notification. So if I see something and I'm like, oh, well, that looks kind of cool, I can just swipe the key. And you can also have it where it doesn't show you this again. And next time I go to keep, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's that slick deal notification. I can take some action on it. But a, another cool thing you can do is you can actually create folders. So if I go here, I can create a new category. So I'm going to create a new category. That was a Google notification, so I'll just say Google. So I got my category there. And now whenever I get a notification, I get this little folder that pops up with the indicator showing how many notifications I have. And it's kind of confusing right now because it says Google and Google app. Well, this is the title of the category you created. And over to the right is actually the name of the app. So what that means is I can actually have multiple, I can have different apps under the same category. And if I want to access it, I just tap on it. And now it shows me the apps, the uh, notifications that are in that category. So that's pretty cool as well. And uh, you can actually create several categories. So if I go over here to keep and go to slick deals, hold down. So now I have the option to add that notification to that category. And now when I go back to my folder, I actually see um, the Google app and slick deals represented. And when I open it up, I'll see the Google uh, the Google app here, the Google notification here, and, you know, of course, my slick deals are still under keep. So apps being in keep have sort of a priority over um, the the category. So if, once you put it in keep, it's going to always be in keep, even if it is showing up in the folder. But this is just a better way, you know, when you have a lot of apps coming in, especially if it's from the same app, instead of having, you know, 20 notifications showing up, you can just create your little category and, you know, it doesn't clutter, it doesn't clutter up your uh, notification bar. One, I think, kind of downside is that they're persistent. So even if I go to the lock screen, open up and you can see that folder there all the time. So when you go through and you create multiple folders, like earlier I had a folder for Instagram, um, I had a folder for um, for media. I had a folder for social media, and they just stayed there the entire time. And I mean, I guess it's nice that they're kind of translucent a little bit, so you can kind of see through them and not that and they're not that intrusive. But I would have liked it better if they didn't show up until you swipe down from from your notifications, you know, and then you can see them. But you know, it's it's still a, a move in the right direction for me. And so the uh, make sure that that's everything I want to talk about as far as notification. Um, and I guess the obvious thing is, you know, if you look here at the top, you've got, uh, you know, your notification. I mean, you got your uh, status bar icons and they look if you've been on stock Android, they look kind of familiar because these are both Verizon phones. And if you look at 
the Verizon icons, they look nothing, you know, they look nothing like the uh, the ones on the new phone here. These are more like stock Android icons and notifications. And these are the Verizon ones. You know, you got the little 4G LTE logo up there. You know, you got their little Wi-Fi symbol versus um, the stock Android kind of filled in Wi-Fi, like if I turn my Wi-Fi on. And you can actually see their Wi-Fi symbol is just the filled in shader. You don't get any individual bars or anything like that. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. And also, make sure there's nothing else I want to talk about on the notification shade. Turn my Wi-Fi off because I'm getting notifications coming in like crazy. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And also, if you are getting a lot of notifications from the same app, uh, one cool thing that it will do is you actually get a pop up saying, hey, I noted that you are dismissing this app a lot. <clears throat> do you want to block notifications from it? So, you know, in the recent verses of Android, you've had the option to block certain notifications from apps. But most people aren't going to proactively go through, especially if you've got, you know, 80 apps installed on your phone or your device. You're not going to go through to the app specific settings and turn off notifications for it. So it's pretty good that if they do notice like uh, and kind of like the new um, kind of Instagram scare, um, a lot of people were asking to turn on notifications for their Instagram uh, page. So I went through and turned on notifications for a couple of people that I like. So I get notifications for every time these people um put up a new post or a new picture, a new video. And it, after, I had admit, after I had dismissed them so much, what it ended up doing was asking me like, hey, I know you, I see you've uh, dismissed these a lot. Do you want us to just block this app from giving notifications? Of course I didn't, but I thought that that was pretty, pretty useful. You know, just another one of those touches that kind of makes it, uh, makes it easier for, for regular users to take advantage of some of the other uh, options in uh, Android. So the last thing I want to touch on, I know this video is getting kind of long, but there's just, I think, a lot of details in this new system UI because it's not just a lock screen. It's a whole UI changer. And it does work on the S6, the S6 Edge, and the Note 5. My wife's got it on the Note 5, and it works pretty much the same way. But the other thing, and the reason why I say this is you know, definitely a UI is it actually changes your multitasking. So if I hit my multitasking key, you'll notice that this is drastically different than what's in Android right now. If we look on the uh, S7 here and hit multitasking, you know, we get this card kind of layout and it's pretty and all that stuff, but uh, it's not that useful. You know, you can see very few apps. You know, it's nice to be able to kind of get a view of the save state of those apps but when I come here if there's an app I want to go to like I can see what is this like seven apps just in one view you know whereas here I have to scroll and scroll and scroll to see a lot of apps here I can you know I can almost go a page at a time and see the apps and I think it's just a cleaner look and it's also quicker it's not as sluggish so you know it's just a little bit quicker to pop up they do it's a little slow on the uh dismissal but um like i said a little bit quicker to pop up a little more functional and you also get more information and more functionality like here you can actually see what profile you're running or which routine which i'm running the home routine because i'm at home and also i have the option to access that uh app tray again so any kind of apps that i access all the time you know instead of having to flick through and scroll through and find it I can even just slam some down here, and that way I can just hit my multitasking, wham, jump right into the app. You know, that's pretty cool, and it's done in a kind of clean way. And you still get your regular uh, multitasking, so that still works the same. You know, there's no issue with that. You know, they haven't changed that at all, but the uh, app selector, or recent apps list, I guess it's called, 
has changed and like I say I like it this I think it's changed for the better you still got your remove all button down there which is uh which is pretty cool as well <clears throat> um I think that's gonna be it for this guys but like I say this is the uh the good lock app from Samsung you gotta get it from the Galaxy App Store so um if you got a Samsung definitely try it out probably never been on the good apps on the uh galaxy app store before uh but take a look they got some good apps there and they've got some that like i say can only be found uh on their on their store so um until next time guys if you got any questions feel free to leave them below i always answer all my questions um like comment subscribe i'm leaving my social media in the description until next time guys peace